Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mission Employable podcast. My name is Ben Oldak. Joining me today is Michelle Kraft. She is formerly uh, part of IVRS, now under the umbrella of Iowa Workforce Development. Welcome to the show, Michelle. Hey, thank you. I'm really excited to be here. That's right. Now, um, for those that d- d- don't know, IVRS, Iowa Vocational Rehabilitation Services, um, doing a lot of great work and uh, with, for Iowans with disabilities, finding career employment and um, all kinds of things in that regard. Uh, but now being brought under the umbrella of IWD as part of the realignment, which happened last year, we did talk a little bit about that over the last couple of months. But um, how's that going, first of all? Fantastic. It has been incredible uh, working so closely with our colleagues at Iowa Workforce Development, though we did before, but nothing like we're doing now um, to best serve Iowans with disabilities. Just having these relationships and being completely integrated um, has been incredible. That's awesome. And so tell, tell us a little bit about what you did at, at IVRS before you came over here. Yeah, I would love to. Like, that's my favorite topic. (laughs) Uh, And so uh, I've been with IVRS for 22 years. I started as a counselor in Mason City up in the north. uh, And then I became the director of business engagement. uh, Oh, my goodness. I think about 15 years ago. And so I've like really been fortunate to be able to work with Iowa businesses and and help them be more inclusive of hiring and retaining people with disabilities. Uh, I also uh, work with our national team. So businesses that have a footprint in Iowa, I get to work with uh, to ensure that no matter what state they're working with, uh, they get quality services for hiring and and retaining people with disabilities. Yeah. So where where'd that passion come from? Because obviously you're like clearly passionate about the subject. Where'd that come from all those years ago? You know ago? what? I don't even know. <laughs> uh, I When I was in college, um, I knew I wanted to work in um, health and human services. Uh, and so I worked as a case manager and at DHS for a while. Uh, and then um, I had learned about the Drake Rehabilitation Program mm-hmm. uh, and I was selected to be a part of that program, and I don't know, it just kind of changed my life. And um, being a counselor and being able to help somebody um, obtain their 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 dreams, their passions, their desires, uh, when when everybody else tells them they can't do it, to be the one person that says yes, you can, and let's go do this together, uh, and have people tell you how much you mean to them and how much you've changed their life. It, it just changes you. And I always tell people it's like, don't take this wrong, but it's like this high that you can't get from anywhere else. Um, it's just incredible to be able to help people uh, to do what they want to do. Yeah, And especially in such a vulnerable population, I feel like, too. I mean, like, it's got to be so rewarding to be part of that as well. Yes, it's like the best in the whole world. I tell anybody that'll listen, I have the best job in the whole world. <laughs> I just hit your microphone. <laughs> That's fine. Um, so, uh, and obviously, we're glad that you're you're here with us now in IWD. So, tell us a little bit how your role has maybe shifted um, now that you're. Uh, in our department. Yeah, I think that that's what's so incredible. Um, I I talked a little earlier about the realignment and being able to partner. And of course, IWD has probably one of the best business engagement teams in the nation. I'm just so proud to be a part of their team. And in the past, of course, we were able to partner with them. uh, But now to be like fully integrated into their team and have the disability services uh, right within business engagement, we're just able to really, um, Brian Dennis and his business engagement team can work with the business. And and when they say, we're interested in learning more about changing our job description to be more inclusive to people with disabilities, that handoff is so natural and so organic as uh, he brings myself and my future team members into uh, that conversation to really help that business uh, develop a process for being more inclusive in their hiring and um, interviewing and retention process. Yeah. And so you're going to be kind of running your own um, department here, right? 
Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're going to have a whole team of uh, business engagement specialists focusing on disability employment. Um, in my mind, they're going to be the best, the best in the in the world because um, we have some really good uh, people here in Iowa um, who have a passion for helping people with disabilities and the uh, employers that hire them. Yeah. And so you were saying a little bit earlier before we got on the microphone that uh in prior years, the um, the business engagement would be the responsibility of some of the people who are counselors as well, right? Um, not only helping uh, Iowans with disabilities kind of on their resume and where they might want to work, but also then on the side making those connections with businesses as well. So like, how does this kind of free up some time and space for the counselors to do what they need to do as, as well as the the business engagement side to do what they need to do. Yeah, that's that's an excellent point. Uh, and so as a counselor, um, we really get to know our job candidates and we are able to um, learn as much as possible about them and help them really identify based on their strengths and their abilities and their passions and their previous work history, good career goals. Uh, as you can imagine, that takes a lot of time, especially when you're serving a very large caseload. And in Iowa, we always had our counselors also um, providing that business outreach, which of course, as you can imagine, is a full-time caseload, yeah. uh, as, especially as you're, you're helping change that culture and you're helping with that retention. Because we don't want a business to just hire a person with a disability. We want the business to hire and retain people with disabilities and have it be an amazing experience for everybody. And so really, I think this is going to allow our counselors to continue to prepare our job candidates for employment and helping them identify good accommodations that are going to be um, helping our job candidates identify accommodations that are going to allow them to do the job um, and advocating for those accommodations uh, while the business engagement team can really work with the business and teaching them about the accommodations and um, the low cost of most accommodations. Uh, and so I think that this is really going to be a great thing for Iowans with disabilities and the businesses that hire hire those individuals. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you kind of brought up a couple of things there that I wanted to hit on because they, they kind of uh, spark some interest is that is there a difference between what businesses need to do in order to like hire these folks? And then is there something that they need to do in order to retain them? Like, is there a difference between uh, you know, uh, an attitude or an idea of, of hiring folks with disabilities and then also making sure that they continue to retain them as well. Yeah. And so I think um, one of the biggest things that our team can do for the whole process is really making sure that it's a disability friendly environment. And so um, we're able to do a lot of training on inclusion um, to include hiring people with disabilities. Um, we're able to help with the, the job um, descriptions and um, making sure the language is inclusive for people with disabilities and not unconsciously um, limiting them from mm. applying. And so when, when we're able to help that business really be an inclusive environment and they hire the person with a disability and they have the right accommodations in place and they have those natural supports in place, the retention, of course, naturally happens, it organically happens, because all of the work was done on the front end mm. um, to, to help ensure that it's a smooth process for everybody. Yeah. And I know we talk, we've talked we talked a little bit about this in the past on this show, but um, just I want to hear it from you as well, is that a lot of these accommodations that are that employers are making aren't a huge deal, right? Like from what you've seen is that like it's much less intensive than you might think if you're an employer. Yeah. And so I think about like even us, we probably use accommodations every day and we don't even we don't even realize they would be an accommodation. And so um, like on my phone, I have like all of my things to do in a task list, um, which could technically be an accommodation. Right. And so a lot of times um, accommodations 
do not cost much, if anything. Um, and one of the really cool things about Iowa Vocational Rehabilitation Services counselors is they work with our job seekers and help them understand their accommodations and learn how to use the accommodations and are comfortable using those accommodations before they even start work. And so um, by by um, having all that in place, it's just such a natural progression to using that accommodation in the workplace. Yeah. And so if you're an employer, what kind of resources are available from from your uh, burgeoning uh, department um, that they'll be able to access? Oh, my gosh. We have so many awesome resources. <laughs> uh, so I hope I remember them all. Yeah. Uh, and so, of course, we have disability sensitivity training um, to include one of the national um, windmills, uh, which was developed by Rich Pimentel, a veteran um, created by the U.S. Department of Labor. Um, it's a great training. Uh, we have multiple people within the workforce um, business engagement division uh, trained in providing that training. Um, it is a 12-part series, um, which businesses can choose one or all 12 of those trainings. Uh, we have also other kinds of like disability-specific trainings. So um, if you were to hire a person with a specific disability, um, we could work with your staff on understanding that disability. Um, of course, not disclosing the disabilities of the individuals we sure. work with, um, but just learning more about the, those different disabilities disabilities. Um, we have staff that are ADA certified and so really helping businesses understand not only um, accessibility, building accessibility, but sorry, program, programmatic accessibility. Um, and so are all of your forms accessible? Are your videos accessible? Um, are the things that your staff going to be using daily accessible to all individuals? Um, we, of course, help with tax credits and we have um, on-the-job trainings and externships and working interviews and um, all kinds of services to help um with that hiring and then that retention process. Yeah, and again, I can't say this enough for employers that might be listening. Uh, all the stuff at no cost to you. This is a state-run program. I mean, you get to get all of these services on your doorstep again at no cost to you. So it's it's you know taking advantage of that is such a smart thing to do. Um, how have you seen kind of employers uh, address? hiring folks with disabilities over the course of your career here? Because you've obviously you've been here for a little bit. Um, has anything kind of stood out over that time? You know, I think the one thing that stood out to me the very most um, through my career was there's still um, biases mm -hmm. um, that are not favorable for people with disabilities and um maybe some discrimination still. Um, and so I think we have a lot of work to do um, across the nation, right? Yeah. I think um, sometimes when people think of a person with a disability, they automatically um, go to a movie they've seen or a story they've heard and not recognizing that one in four people have a disability. Um, and Many times our family members, our friends, our coworkers, our neighbors um, are people with disabilities. And so uh, I think that was probably one thing that surprised me the most. Mm. Um, just some of the candidates I worked with who like really sometimes struggle yeah. um, with that, that bias. Yeah. And I mean, it's I think it's important that we recognize that and talk about it and figure out ways to address it, because, um, you know, that's not going to change if we if we don't. And so it's great that we are able to have that conversation and talk about that and uh, make people aware of it, because it's like you said, it's, a you know, a lot of times it's unconscious. Right. You're not actively thinking about this all the time when you're making hires or looking at job applications, but it might be kind of like subtle in the back of your head or something like that. Right. And right. um being able to talk about that with someone like you or, or any one of our um, uh, people that work uh, in the IVRS department um, is a great way to address that. And the the one thing that I want that is I think is important is that like when you do make that step to 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 address some of those things and learn about it, it's not going to be like you know 
you're going to be attacked for it or, or, or look bad, right? We're coming from a place of education and understanding and knowing that, um, you know, this isn't second nature for everybody. Right. Right. Um, and it, and it's, as long as you learn, it's okay. It, um, just learn from that process and um, ask a lot of questions. And like you said, uh, call IVRS or call myself. Um, we would be happy to come out and and help provide some of that education. Yeah, and I mean, like uh, even for for us in the communications department, when you guys came on board, you know, something that we really focused on a lot was um, uh, even even something as simple as making sure that if you're creating a graphic or a document or something like that, that there's enough contrast there between the, you know, the background and the font that you're using so that folks who might have some sort of, uh, you know, colorblindness or another like vision disability are able to access it. Right. And that's something we don't think about oftentimes, right? right? That or like alt texting your pictures so that somebody with a screen reader um, knows what the picture is. Um, safety. Um, I... I think about some of the businesses I've been into um, and we place individuals who are deaf. And of course, the alarms go off. They, they can't hear the alarm. And so um, we worked with one business um, and we uh, had to change the policy, right? So that the policy would allow for, for them to have the cell phone, their cell phones on um, the plant floor. Mm. And then we were able to um, signal the alarms to their cell phone text. Gotcha. Um, so they could feel the vibration and look at their cell phone right. and like, no. Um, and so um, we were able actually to take all the Motorola um, communications that staff had with each other um, and move that to their cell phones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, things like that. Right. Yeah. Simple things that don't, you know, cause huge disruptions on the on the floor or anything like that, but um, are, are very welcome to folks that need them. And yes. uh, that's really cool that we can do stuff like that. And it makes sense because, I mean, we know that folks who have disabilities are often, um, you know, face a lot of barriers to employment. And we know right now that there are a lot of people that are uh, looking for employees. And, and we know that folks with disabilities make incredible employees. I mean, we see it, we see it all the time. All the time. And like I said, if you look at even our, our own um, workforce here, we, I mean, with one in four people having disabilities, a fourth of our of our coworkers, sure, um, our people with disabilities, and um, I think what's important is a lot of times people with disabilities can self-accommodate, and they never have to disclose. Right, um, and so we are hiring people with disabilities, um, and we just don't always know it. Uh, and so, one of I think the best things is when we do have this partnership and we communicate, um, we can make sure that you have that retention then. Yeah. So if uh, and if an employer wants to get in touch with you and talk about anything that we might have talked about on the podcast or, uh, you know, might look forward to uh, working with your uh, department, how, how's the best way to get in touch with you? Uh, how about email for right Sounds now? Because you know what? I don't know if my phone number is going to transfer or not. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just my name, michelle.craft at iwd.iowa.gov. Perfect. Well, Michelle, thank you so much for coming on thank to the show you. with us. We had a great time talking with you. And um, yeah, thanks again for uh, listening, everybody, and um, make sure that you get in touch with Michelle if you're interested in any of the things that we talked about today. You're the best. Thank oh, you. Oh, I try. <laughs>